Hey guys, welcome back to Field Notes. Uh, we're deep into October now, and I'm just wrapping up some of this last drift fence work before indigo season. And, uh, you know, got a really cold night tomorrow. I was closing up the fences today, wasn't expecting anything uh, too special, but I did get something really, really cool. I gotta be careful with it, and you'll see why in just a moment. This is an Eastern Slender Glass Lizard. And oh my gosh, these things are amazing. Uh, this is an adult. You can see it's got quite a long tail here. Tail has never been broken. And you know, the reason these lizards are called glass lizards is because uh, they have a tendency to drop their tails when grasped. And when they do so, it often shatters. It ends up in multiple pieces. Um, and this, of course, allows the lizard to get away while the predator's focused on a, a couple pieces of wiggling tail. Now, after one of these glass lizards has dropped its tail, um, it'll take several months for that tail to regrow. And it'll never quite be the same, but it will grow back. It's just gonna take a lot of time and a lot of calories to build that back up. Somehow, this lizard's gone its whole life with an absolutely complete tail, which is not common for you know, lizards this size. This, this one's about three feet long. Man, it's spectacular. It's really, really cool. And uh, most of this length here is actually tail. So just right around where my pinky is right here, um, that is the back of the body. And everything else beyond that is tail. And so I have to be very careful to only grasp uh, only restrain that part of body or I, I risk this lizard dropping its tail. Now these are uh, one of four glass lizard species we have in Georgia and uh, it is the longest. Uh, these lizards can get up to about four feet long. They're incredibly large animals um, but they're also not seen very often. Uh, they prefer habitats like we have back here behind me uh, real dense wire grass savanna. Uh, they like xeric dry uplands and they're, they're not super uncommon. Um, however, they can be very, very hard to find. Um, this is only the fifth slender glass lizard I've ever seen. And uh, three of those five have come from right here. Two in my drift fence and I hiked the other one out here in the savanna, but I only saw it for about four seconds before it absolutely melted into uh, the wire grass. These guys are built for these habitats with dense ground cover uh, and they just vanish into that, that wire grass and all the forbs. Um, very, very hard to even keep an eye on. Uh, they just kind of melt into the habitat. Uh, really, really neat animals. Uh, they are uh, mostly insectivorous, uh, eating a wide variety of invertebrates. Um, but they can also take small reptiles and potentially even small mammals. These get that big. They have pretty big heads, powerful jaws. Um, their closest relative in the United States are alligator lizards. And if you ever got to see one of these up close, you could see the shape of the head, um, you know, the, the fold along the body, the lateral fold of skin that runs the length of the body. Uh, very, very similar to what you'd see on an alligator lizard. When these lizards do get seen by people, they're frequently mistaken for snakes because of course they have no legs. They're a legless lizard. Um, but they're, you know, once you've seen a few, um, there are some differences that are pretty easy. Uh, even just the way that they move through the habitat is pretty, pretty unique. Um, however, if you ever got a really good look at them, you could see that these lizards have eyelids, they can blink, and they have external ear openings, both of which snakes do not have. Um, they're also, they, when in hand, they feel a lot more rigid than a snake. They're not, they don't feel quite as flexible. And that's because underneath their scales, um, they're reinforced by these little bony plates, which are called osteoderms. Uh, it's very similar to what you would uh, have on an alligator or crocodile. Those bony plates for extra protection under the skin. Uh, so they're, they have almost a, a hard armored feel to them. Um, 
very, very fascinating lizards. Man, I, I just never get sick of seeing these. Like I said, I, I don't see them very often. And uh, this is as exciting as any snake that could have turned up in that drift fence today. Really, really remarkable creatures. Now it's getting a little late and uh, you know we've got a cold night coming in tonight. And uh, so I wanna get him out to where he can find a place to spend the night. Um, and I've handled him enough. He's been a really good sport. Uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna go take him back here to this wire grass savanna and let him go on his way. All right, he is ready to go.